Hey guys, Joe here, and here we are to talk to you about the Marth matchup guide slash analysis. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about who I think he's good versus, who I think he's bad versus, some pros and cons of Marth, and a lot more. But with all that said, let's get this started. First off, let's talk about the pros about Marth, and he does have quite a bit of pros, he's a pretty good character, even though some people, I don't know, with him it either varies from people saying he's very good to very bad, I think he's pretty mid tier and like a decent character overall, but with that said, let's get to starting. The first thing is that he does have his tipper, now this is the one of the main things that really makes him a good character, if you do tipper the opponent while they're shielding, it makes a lot of your aerials pretty safe, also of course, jab to tipper, and just tipper side smash, tipper down smash, tipper up smash, all these kill extremely early and make you actually a really good character, but at the same time you do have to make sure to hit that tipper, or else you can become a lot weaker of a character a lot faster. The next thing is that he's of course very fast, a lot of his moves actually come out pretty fast, they do have quite a bit of end lag, but his moves come out pretty fast, he's pretty fast, and he can actually do combos at least decently. Third thing is that he does have really great spacing, now it isn't as good as it was in previous games, of course you can only one forward air, but something I really like to do a lot is go neutral air into forward air, or go down tilt to neutral air, that's something that I just like to do a lot, and I kind of learned off of playing Roy. The fourth thing is that he can combo off of his throws, now he can't combo way too much, but sometimes you can combo down throw into attacks. And, you know, it's okay, and also you do have a kill throw with the up throw. The fifth thing is that his Nair does combo a lot. Now, this is one of his main comboing tools, which is actually a little bit hard to do, and a little bit hard to get used to, but you can Nair into, like, jab, you can Nair into side B at some points, you can Nair into a smash attack. You can use Nair for a lot of different things, but most of the time you'll be Nairing to just keep the opponent away, or using down tilts into Nair, stuff like that. Also, you can use Nair out of some of your throws. The sixth thing is that he actually is very safe for shields. Now, this is only if you do get the tipper on your attacks. Now the main reasoning for this is that if you get the tipper, the opponent gets into a lot more shield stun, and with the new shield stun algorithm, they're in that shield for a long time and your attacks become a lot more safe. But if you don't get the tipper, they won't have extra shield stun, and you'll pretty much be in big trouble. The eighth thing is also that his side B does apply a lot of safe pressure. Now I don't see people using this way too much, but instead of his neutral air or of his uh, forward air, you can go for a side B. There's one man of side B out of nowhere, and it can apply a lot of good pressure. It can just kind of come out of nowhere, and a lot of people don't see it a lot of the time, and it can somewhat get into other comboing moves. The ninth thing is that he does have a very fast usable counter. Now this is probably one of the best counters in the entire game. Of course, no counters are really way too great, but as far as the counter game, this one's actually a lot better than a lot of the other ones. The tenth thing is that he does have an okay approach game, mainly because of his neutral air, his down tilt, and his side B. Now he can't approach the best, but he can approach at least okay because if you do forward air or neutral air into a grab, it can do okay, or we can do neutral air into a jab attack if you do happen to get like one of those tippers. So, you know, he has an okay approach game. It's not the best, but it is actually better than quite a bit of the other characters I've noticed. And of course, he does have a very good defensive game, very good spacing game. The 11th thing is that he is very good in the fact that he has a quick recovery that can also be used as a get off me move. If the opponent is comboing you, press up B, or if you want to get back on the stage for free, press up B and you'll get back pretty quickly and pretty easily. So with pros come cons, and the first con is that he is very spacing reliant. Now what this means is that you will have to have a lot of space, and if the opponent gets up in your grill, you're in really big trouble. The second thing is that his combos really don't work way too well at all, and especially at later percents, his combos really don't hook together, and you'll pretty much have no combos at all, which can be a bit of a problem. Of course, the third thing is combos are a little bit unreliable, to a lot unreliable. A lot of them are DI dependent, a lot of his combos go into more of strings later on. And even early on, they can be strings versus certain characters, versus a lot of the latter people. The fourth thing is also that he does have a lot of lag on his smashes, on his tilts, on his aerials. If you don't happen to get the tipper to um, hit the opponent's shield, or to hit the opponent, then you'll be in big trouble because you will have a lot of lag on your most of your moves and they can just run up and hit you. Next thing is that he does have these risky smashes. They do take quite a while to get out and if you do miss them, you're kind of doomed. <laughs> the sixth thing is that he does have a punishable get off me move. If the opponent does shield your up B, like they combo you, you're on the ground, you use up B, the opponent shields it, then they can do whatever they want. They can try to get a smash, use an aerial, get a grab. There's not much you can do because you are in a free falling state out of that, so that's that's pretty bad. Seventh thing is that you can DI his jab. Normally you could go jab into side smash, jab into nair, jab into forward air sometimes, stuff like that, but you can also DI his jab at certain percents, smash DI or just regular DI. So it can be a bit of a problem. You can get out of his jab if you hold certain directions, and his jab only combo if you hit on certain parts of the jab, which is kind of weird. And the final thing is that he's very hard to play at his best potential. You have to hit all your tippers, you have to get all your combos, you have to get a ton of reads. Very hard, but very rewarding. So now let's talk about who I think he has an advantage versus disadvantage versus and is equal on. Now, of course, with Marth, I just think that he's a character that has mostly equal matchups. Not way too much bad ones, not way too much good ones. This is, of course, saying that you are very good, you're hitting most of your tippers, and you're spacing very well. So, all that said, let's get this started. So, who does he win versus? And these are just my opinions, so tell me your opinion in the comment section below, but who does he win versus? I think he wins versus other spacing characters, but ones that can't space quite as well of him, have a bit more lag, or just don't do as well on the shield. Secondly, he does good versus bad defensive characters. You can just go on the offense as Marth a lot of the time, and if the opponent can't do much about it, then 
they're kind of doomed. The third thing is that he does do very well versus light slash middleweights for the very early tipper kills, and even okay versus heavyweights because his combos work a little bit longer, but if you get a side smash, you can kill it like 20 or 30%, and with rage, I've even killed it like 15%. It gets really ridiculous. Of course, normally it would be about 40%, but it can be very early kills, especially versus light or medium weight people. Um, of course, the fourth thing, he does very well versus short range fighters, and this means pretty much because you have a disjointed hitbox, you can just forward air, and if they're short range, they can't do way too much about it, especially if you hit the shield or hit them. The fifth thing he does well versus risky moves. If the opponent does a risky move and misses, you can line yourself up, get a side smash, and get that early kill. Sixth thing, of course, is similar, uh, just punishable enemies, enemies that take a lot of time to get their moves out or just have a lot of lag after a lot of their greatest moves, you can do very well with them. Seventh thing is that people, you do well with those people that can't really get out of a juggle. Now, of course, you can't juggle way too well, but normally you can get at least a few up airs if opponents can't really get out of it way too easily. So, you can do good versus people that can't juggle. And finally, you do pretty well versus people that are very slow because you can outspace them and you can just pretty much beat them all out because you are so quick. But with all that said, let's talk about who I think he does have a disadvantage versus, which isn't way too many people. I think he's normally at least decent, and even versus these disadvantages, he can do pretty well if you do get a lot of tippers. So the first one I'd say is, of course, combo-oriented characters. Now, of course, he does have that one up B as a get-off-me move that can get out a lot of combos, but even if you use it, a lot of the times the opponent can just grab you when you're free-falling state or just attack you after you use your up B. So it's not the safest thing in the world. Second thing is he doesn't do way too well against fast characters because they can just run up or outspeed him in the first place. And you can't space way too well against these fast characters. The third thing is when enemies can approach really easily. I mean, you can try to stop them, but it can be very hard. Especially because your defense isn't the strongest in the game. If the opponent can approach pretty easily and very safely, you'll be in big trouble. The fourth thing is versus projectile based character. Of course, you don't have projectiles. Uh, your approach isn't the best in the game. It's pretty good, but it's not the best, so they can outcamp you very easily. And there's just not much you can do against projectiles, you just kind of have to hope that you can shield them and get in with your speed. The fifth thing is you don't do way too well versus very, very heavy enemies, or at least enemies that can just not die way too early. Now, this problem for this is that with Marth, a lot of times you want to get these really early kills with your side smash, but if they live for a while, then it kind of outdoes your main bonus about picking your character. Second thing is against people with very safe, low lag moves, because you really want to fight people that have a lot of lag on their moves, because then you can go for these side smashes and kill them very early on, but if they don't have way too much lag, then you won't be able to punish them very easily. And finally, the eighth thing is, of course, campers, because, as I said earlier, you really can't get in, and you'll be in big trouble if you cannot get in as Marth. Finally, he does have an even matchup versus everybody else, as you can see on the screen. He does have a lot of very, very good things about him, mainly his tipper, and just that he can space very easily and beat a lot of other people's spacing, but at the same time, he does have some big weaknesses, and if you don't play Mark to the perfection, then you're going to be in big trouble against a lot of these matchups, and if you do play imperfect, you'll still not have a very good time a lot of times. They're very even and very hard to get through, and you'll really have to learn Marth, you'll learn how to play him, and you'll have to learn how to beat these matchups one by one. They really won't be these easy bait combo matchups. Finally, do you need a secondary as Marth? Now, with Marth, I would actually say that you definitely should pick up a secondary, mainly for the fact that if you're on an off day or if you're just on a day where you're not getting all your tippers, then you're not really going to do way too well in your matches. You want to pick somebody else up that's a little bit easier to play, that has a little bit less just needing to hit perfectly, and you want somebody that can just, you know, play a little bit more casually and still do very well as, and this is just something that I do when I ever play Marth. I can't play him for way too long in a row, because it just does take a lot of precise movement, a lot of precise spacing, and a lot of precise smashes in order to get the kill. But that's all that we have to say about Marth. He's a very good character. He's one of the stronger characters that I'd say. He does have that really good thing about him, mainly his tipper, but if you do fail with your tipper, then you become a very weak character. So it's really kind of a balance. You're a very strong one, but at the same time, you're kind of a weak character, which is really weird. You have a pretty decent speed, you have a decent weight. So overall, I'd say you're fine. You don't need to pick up a secondary, but I'd say you probably should. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you did enjoy this video, if you did enjoy this video make sure to press that like button and comment down below if for next week you do want to see Kirby, Pitt, Olimar, or Shulk, vote on that down below and the person with the most votes will of course be seen next time so try to vote in your guy, make sure to press the like button, I'll be seeing you all next time.